Welcome into Broncos Breakdown by Chat Sports. I am Tom Downey here with a look at some way too early training camp winners and losers for Denver. Camp's underway and there are some players impressing. And we'll start on the positive side here with maybe one of the biggest winners overall, Jerry Judy. He's being hyped up by his teammates and maybe that shouldn't be a surprise given his pre-draft pedigree. I think he is absolutely primed to take a major year two jump in 2021. Now, Judy did struggle at points last year, specifically with some drops, many of which were ill-timed in the end. And although I will make note that receiver play is intrinsically tied to how good the quarterback actually is, I think Judy's going to be a stud in the NFL. Among the teammates hyping him up right now, the star safety, Justin Simmons. Here's what Simmons had to say on the young receiver. Quote, there's no doubt in my mind that Judy can have an all-pro, Pro Bowl season this year. He's just that good. Everyone wants to talk about what happened last year, but I'm not worried about it one bit. We only got a snippet of it today, of him snagging passes out of the air way outside his body frame. That's just the beginning. I know he's going to be tremendous for us this year. He's going to be big. Now, maybe you're worried about the having to catch balls outside of his frame, but that's a quarterback issue and... Spoiler alert, uh, neither Drew Locke nor Teddy Bridgewater on either side of the winners or losers. It's too early to tell. But I do think Judy is primed to have a big time second season. He and Cortland Sutton, plus he can throw in Tim Patrick, uh, K.J. Hamler as well, have the potential to be one of the best wide receiver cores in the NFL. Are they there right this second? No, probably not, but this is a team with plenty of talent at the wide receiver spot. I also wanted to briefly here mention Trinity Benson, the unheralded former UDFA out of East Central College in Oklahoma, which East Central, so specific as to where it actually is, but he's drawn some praise well, so just a quick mention on that one. But the focus here at the receiver spot is, of course, on Jerry Judy. I think he is going to have a big-time season for the Denver Broncos. I am very confident in that. But how about you guys? What is your confidence level in Jerry Judy? Rate this for him in a scale of 1 to 10. 1 being you think he's a bust, weird take. 10 being you think he's going to be an all-pro receiver. Get your votes in right now. Over to defense now. Justin Sternat has drawn some very positive praise early in Broncos camp, particularly in coverage, which is, you know, what you want your linebackers to do in the modern-day NFL. In fact, he even got some reps with the ones, the starting lineup, last week. Now, Sternat does still face a tricky battle, uphill battle, if you will, to start. Now, he didn't play at all last year after being drafted out of Wake Forest, but the Broncos clearly weren't sold on their, at least long-term, linebacker duo of Josie Jewell and Alexander Johnson. That's why they drafted Baron Browning. But maybe Sternad, amid some issues for Browning, which we'll get into later on, and Jewell as well on the loser side, maybe he could earn a role. And I think that'd be a nice benefit for the Broncos if they're able to pull that off. So I think offensively and defensively, Judy and Sternad are two of the top names to watch early on at camp. But what do you guys think? Who do you think is the number one Broncos training camp winner so far? This is positive focused here. So pick a winner for me. Get your votes in the comment section. This will be the pinned comment. So get the ad break here on YouTube. Scroll on down and let me know. An answer that I think might end up being pretty popular is Patrick Sertan, the cornerback out of Alabama, with a rookie first round pick who the Broncos surprised many, including myself, by going with him over, say, maybe an offensive lineman or a quarterback. But Sertan was, I think, in the end, the top player on the Broncos' board. He's been dominating at camp so far. He is going to find a way onto the field for Denver. The Broncos are going to do it. Maybe it's as an outside dime or even an inside dime corner package. He is going to get onto the field because Sertan is the future at cornerback for Denver, which I think is the right call. I love him coming out of Alabama. My number one corner, I think he has lockdown cover corner ability. I think this could be a 10-year starter in the NFL. Now, the nice side for Denver is they don't have to rush Sertan into a role. They've got Fuller. They've got Darby, Bryce Kelly. They even got Michael Ojemudia as a, right now, I would argue the best number five corner in all of the NFL. But I think Sertan's role is going to exist for this team. 
Now, as we sit right now, the defensive rookie of the year odds, Micah Parsons leads the way, the Cowboys linebacker. Then Dolphins edge rusher Jalen Phillips at plus 650. Quiddy Pay, Jeremiah Wusu Koromoa, and Patrick Sertan all tied at plus 900. If you want to make some money, there's some decent investment there on Sertan at plus 900. Gamble and Sam behind the scenes, he feels pretty good about that particular bet. Back to offense now here. Calvin Anderson, not the name I really thought we were going to get to here, but here we are. He's getting plenty of work at right tackle, including with the first team. In fact, based on the early returns at camp, it would appear that it's Calvin Anderson versus Bobby Massey, not Cam Fleming, to be a potential starter. Clearly, Anderson is pretty well liked by the organization. Now, Anderson didn't play a ton last year. Overall, he was fine. Zero sacks allowed and only 132 snaps to its five hurries. Nothing terrible, but it's also a pretty small sample size. Tough to really know how accurate that will be over, a, over really a, a potential 10x jump if he played every snap. Now that leaves the right tackle spot as the big question mark for this team, right? Bobby Massey, Kelvin Anderson, maybe Cam Fleming ends up getting involved there as I think the national expectation was when they first signed those two guys. But there is a battle here. This is one of the top battles, not named quarterback, worth watching at Broncos camp. So who do you think ends up winning the job? Pick a right tackle for me. Type A for Calvin Anderson, M for Bobby Massey, or F for Cam Fleming. Get your votes in right now. Let's head back to the line here, this time the defensive side. McTelvin Ajim, who didn't play a ton in his first year out of Arkansas, but has been getting a lot of praise by coaching staff and media as well. Now, former third round pick, no one's ever really doubted his upside, was a highly touted recruit when he went to Arkansas as well, just hasn't ever quite put it together. Head coach Vic Fangio, though, had this to say on Ajim. Quote, we hope so, and when asked about his future and making the roster and how, he, how he's coming along. The next four, week, four weeks will tell, along with the, the preseason, if he's one of the 53. He's a lot better than he was last year. I feel a lot better about him. That quote almost makes it seem like, A, Ajim only made the roster because he was a third-round pick, but also that Fangio does feel better about him. And I think for Denver, especially with Mike Purcell right now a bit banged up, there is room for a guy like McTelvin Ajim or Draymond Jones, who's been hyped up by Vaughn Miller, to carve out a pretty significant role on the defensive line. Again, in, in their nickel package, which is really almost the most commonly run package, they'll use two of those defense linemen, and probably won't be Mike Purcell. If Ajim can carve out a, a situational role and make an impact, that's a good boost for the Denver Broncos. Now, if you guys want more Broncos videos, hit that big red button and subscribe today. The link is right there at the bottom of your screen if you need it, but you're watching on YouTube. So it's actually pretty simple. All you guys got to do is hit the big red button right now. YouTube.com slash Broncos TV. Don't miss out on any of the Broncos videos we've got planned for you guys moving forward. There are losers in life, and there are some losers early on right now at camp. Now, it's early, so don't panic, but Josie Jewell is my first name up here. He's missing some time with a groin issue. Does not sound fun. And although it's not likely going to be a problem during the season, this is significant for camp. Missing out on reps hurts players when others at the exact same spot are making up ground. And that's what appears to be going on right now for Josie Jewell. Okay? Now, 113 tackles, five tackles for loss, two sacks, four pass breakups. Jules played quite well. I thought that he was a bit of a nice, pleasant surprise, even if maybe coverage isn't his best area of expertise. But if A.J. Johnson, Alex Johnson, is one starter, I thought Jules would be number two. Maybe Justin Sternard ends up making an impact. The Broncos weren't sold on this position. That's why they spent a relatively premium pick on Baron Browning. And Baron Browning, unfortunately, is also in our loser's side of it here. Then with a lower leg injury. Now, originally, we said he's going to return quickly. And I hope he still does. Maybe even before this video ends up going on on YouTube. But he's now stuck kind of in the middle of his rehab. He, he is a raw player. And that's stuck, by the way, is from Vic Fangio himself. He's a raw player. He needs as many reps as he can get. Missing out on those valuable reps early in camp 
does end up impacting him as it relates to making an impact in his first season. Now, I don't think a linebacker is the answer here, but let me know what you think in the comments section. What is your number one concern right now about the Denver Broncos? I think it's pretty obvious. It's the quarterback position of which neither Locke nor Bridgewater made this list because, well, it's what we're to call a winner and loser of that race right now, but I think it's quarterback. But, of course, we're a show for the people. So get your votes in for me right now in the comments section. Tyree Cleveland now. Now, as I say now, back to back like a crazy person, not great reviews early on here. Cleveland struggled badly with drops to open up camp, and he is fighting, after all, for a roster spot at a fairly deep position. Now, again, I'll emphasize this as we go on throughout camp. It's still early, but every rep counts if you're on the roster bubble like Tyree Cleveland is. He's not guaranteed anything. I think Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, Tim Patrick, KJ Hamler, they're going to make this team. That leaves Spencer, Cleveland, Seth Williams, everyone's favorite receiver quarterback hybrid, Kendall Hilton, maybe even Trinity Benson or an Amara Darbo or William Jackson, another, another UDFA, all fighting for two, maybe three spots. That makes it a little bit tricky if you're the Denver Broncos and trying to figure out who ends up being one of those last receiver spots. Special teams will matter there, make no mistake, but if you're a, a guy fighting for a roster spot, drops are like the one thing you cannot be doing out there at camp. So I'm not out on Cleveland, don't get me wrong on that front, but he does have to play a little bit better, perform a little bit better at camp if he's going to be able to make the roster. So still early, don't panic, but it is worth discussing.